It's nice that Justin can pop and lock and everything, but justice for Janet, y'all. Before Justin Timberlake became a household name, he was a frontman of NSYNC, one of the most successful boy bands of all time. But a phone call from Michael Jackson apparently gave Justin the courage to say bye 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 to the group. Baby, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> he solidified his star status as a solo artist in 2002 with Justified. But he was frustrated with people still classifying his music as pop. Three months of my album, first album was out, I couldn't enjoy it because I was like, man, I just want to get away from pop. I want to do R&B. It's what I grew up listening to. JT cited Prince and Michael Jackson as inspiration for his career, and the album has a heavy R&B influence. He also collabed with Timbaland for several songs, including the Grammy-winning Cry Me a River. You were my son. You were my earth. But one legitimate criticism against JT was that he rose to fame on the shoulders of black artists and black music. Then cherry-picked went to align with them. On The Nightly Show, rapper Vic Mensa accused Timberlake of appropriating black culture, but failing to show up as an ally. If you roll down Justin Timberlake's Twitter for the past two years, which I just did, you see nothing that supports black people when it's more difficult. Maybe Janet Jackson could have used more support from Justin when he accidentally exposed her breast during their Super Bowl halftime show in 2004. Do you think in any way that uh, Justin Timberlake left you hanging out there? <laughs> the FCC received thousands of complaints from puritanical skulls across the country and fined CBS half a million dollars. Jackson was forced to apologize for literally half a second of pasty covered boob exposure. Justin apologized, but also downplayed the entire clusterfuck. Listen, I know it's been a rough week on everybody, and um, what occurred was unintentional, completely regrettable, and I apologize if you guys are offended. But Nipplegate got Janet uninvited to the Grammys and dealt a blow to her career. All the emphasis was put on me, mm -hmm. not on Justin, and we were friends. Mm -hmm. And, and not that we, we aren't now, we haven't spoken, but, but uh, certain things you just don't do to friends. In 2005, when Justin made Future Sex Love Sounds, he collabed with Timbaland again, and apparently asked him to make five or six more Crimea Rivers, which might be five or six too many. This time, Timberlake wanted to be seen as a rock star, suggesting that Sexy Back sounded like Bowie and David Byrne covering James Brown, which, okay, bro, sure. Despite what JT says, Future Sex was obviously driven by R&B and funk, and cultural borrowing wasn't exactly a hot topic at the time. If anything, it was celebrated. One reviewer even said, give him credit for being one of the few white men still brave enough to make black music. It it's not courage, but a desire for relevance that keeps Justin Timberlake tied to black music. In 2018, he tried desperately to blend R&B with Americana but the people weren't feeling it. Maybe he's not the brave white man we've been waiting for.